general attitudes in, in the general public uh, has improved around cannabis. And I think, I think huge strides have been made in the last few years. Um, and in particular, uh, you know, medical cannabis, so not thinking about recreational for a second, just from the medical cannabis point of view, uh, it, it, uh, I think actually the, uh, it seems that the majority of people, um, the, the large majority of people support the notion of medical cannabis. Um, and that's really happened in the last two, maybe three years in particular. Um, and I think there, there doesn't feel to me to be any great resistance um, um, from the general public around the concept of medical cannabis. Cannabis from a recreational point of view is the same. It's, uh, I think, um, perhaps not as many people kind of support it, but there definitely is, there's been a big turnaround in people understanding that, well, no, cannabis is not this dangerous, evil substance that is gonna turn everybody into psychotic monsters and, you know, kind of cause havoc and chaos or, you know, you know all those kind of myths um, I think people have a much better understanding of that. You know, know that that's not true. The things that they've been told over the last 50 years through the media is not is not the case at all. Uh, that they they can see um, how um, there's, you know, the damage to society caused by alcohol, and uh, you look at that, and then you look at cannabis, and you see, well, actually, you know, it's not it's not the same. It's not the same. I'm David Badcock and I'm the Chief Executive of Drug Science. Uh, Drug Science is a scientific organisation. We are looking to provide evidence around the, um, the impacts of drugs generally, all, all, all drugs, um, the impacts in terms of harms that they can cause, um, but really more importantly where there is benefits that those that drugs can provide um, as well. So we provide um, a scientific uh, analysis of evidence that's available right now and we also look to generate um, new evidence to show where there are drugs that could be used in different ways, different medical ways, um, to help people with uh, various different conditions that they have. Um, so we're, we're, we're really kind of the foremost scientific body, independent body in the UK, we're made up of the most accomplished and most uh, authoritative and respected scientists and academics and policy experts um, in the UK, um, all with that um, joined up vision that uh, really that um, that we think generally people don't have a, um, don't have the best information around drugs. Um, they the the what they hear is what the, either the government tells them or what the media portrays, and often that's not we think that's not an accurate um, depiction of uh, the the effects of drugs. I've been involved in drug science for about three years, but before that I worked in the drug and alcohol treatment sector um, for probably 15 or so years, um, and during that time I I've met literally thousands of people who have had you know, really quite severe problems with drugs or alcohol and um, they have gone through treatment services and uh, or going through treatment services or come out the other end and they've really turned their lives around um, because they've had the right support the right care um, and it's you know it's incredible to to see um, how people can change their lives uh, in that way um, and, and I've all you know through that time through those sort of 15 years or so I've seen how um, in my opinion how um, generally drug policy in the UK and in many other parts of the world is counterproductive to um, the, the problems that people face and the reasons why they might choose to use drugs um, to try and overcome those problems, but in fact it makes it worse. And um, drug policy generally um, doesn't support um, people overcoming those problems. You know, it seeks to uh, criminalize people in, in many cases. Uh, that just adds to people's problems. It doesn't help uh, the situation. Um, and I firmly believe that having a health approach is what's required rather than um, you know, a criminal justice approach uh, to the issue of drugs. Project 2021 is um, essentially it's a multi-stakeholder collaboration of stakeholders from all parts of the cannabis world, the medical cannabis world, so includes um, industry partners but also includes clinicians, uh, the academics from drug science and patients. 
Um, so it's a joint project and the, the ultimate aim is to generate a body of evidence where we can show the effectiveness of medical cannabis in the different conditions that we've identified, um, where we want to really focus on in particular. Um, but in order to achieve that, we have to address the barriers that those patients are facing at the moment. And we're never going to get a, a comprehensive um, evidence base unless people are actually prescribed and, and, and we can measure patient outcomes and look at you know, the different um, effectiveness, at adverse events, qualities, you know, all the aspects of um, evidence that doesn't exist in the UK at the moment. So we set up a framework really, and this is, this is kind of the best way that I like to describe Project 2021. It's a framework that allows patients to be prescribed, remove those barriers so they can access medical cannabis. And at the same time, the doctors who are prescribing are collecting the evidence base. So they're not just, they're not just making prescriptions um, based on their clinical assessment, which is, you know, one thing in itself, they're going an extra step where they are um, on follow-ups with the patients, they'll be recording how that patient, uh, how their health and well-being has improved or not, as the case may be. Um, we have a range of um, outcome measures that we will be assessing along the way. Um, so we'll start to establish that um, body of evidence um, that we then hope um, before not too long, hopefully, um, that the regulatory bodies in the UK, so NHS, um, MHRA, NICE, they can look at the evidence, they can use it to develop the right guidelines and really hopefully allow more doctors to then be able to prescribe and then ultimately that the NHS will reimburse the, uh, the cost of the medication um, through the NHS, like you know, all the other treatment options that patients have at the moment. So, so that's, that's really Project 2021. It's very ambitious, um, there's no doubt about it. We, um, but we know that the only way that we're going to uh, accelerate the process um, is to, to have that ambition, to have the kind of numbers that we're talking about and really just to, to help more people uh, be able to access medical cannabis in, in, a, in, a, uh, in a clinically prescribed way, in a safe way, uh, and we can use the evidence to then continue to develop the guidelines. If cannabis as a plant can be beneficial to you and, and we can create the environment where you can do that safely, well then, that, then you should be allowed to do that, absolutely. And then that same applies for recreational use um, you know, as well. So when, you're, um, when you're, you're, you described how you're at home, you have friends around and you, and you, you, you want to smoke cannabis or use cannabis, shall I say, um, rather than going to the pub and drinking loads of alcohol, well, to me, that's a, that's a better option because uh, we know that alcohol is more harmful than cannabis in, in every, almost every wake. Alcohol is a more harmful substance than cannabis is. And yet, from a public point of view, we are encouraged to use alcohol um, for that kind of uh, that social integration that you know, is really important. Um, we're encouraged to use alcohol. And yet, if, it's, if alcohol is misused, I'm not saying that alcohol is bad, but if it's misused, then it can be very harmful, much more than cannabis would be. We are we're in, the, in a, a life-changing uh, environment uh, at the moment for all of us. And there are certain industries, particularly the music industry, are very hard hit. And, um, and, and that has an impact on people's health, their mental health. That encourages them, or that, that points them towards doing things that are even more harmful to them using illicit drugs f from the illicit market where you don't know what you're taking, where you, you, know, you don't know um, how it's going to respond, you know, how, you, how you're going to respond to it, whether it's going to do good or, do, or not do you any good. Um, and that, that's, that's, that is the natural progression at the moment. What we should be doing is finding, seeing the problems that these people face, treating it as a health issue, giving them the best possible medication that's available to them doesn't necessarily mean things like SSRIs, which not always work, <laughs> not, not always effective. There are alternatives that can be um, much more beneficial. Um, and that's, that's, we should be developing our drug policy, we should be developing our understanding, our knowledge, the academic um, evidence um, around types, these types of medicines that can be really, really um, effective in those types of situations. The, the key thing, the, the, really the key thing is uh, doctors 
understanding what medical cannabis is, um, what they, how they, how it can be used, and um, to, to have the confidence to be able to prescribe it. And exactly as Leon was was saying um, earlier, because um, you'll you'll find that. The, it's the patients who are by far the best informed. Um, and, and I totally understand that as a doctor, um, you, it can be um, uh, quite disconcerting when, when a patient comes to you and clearly has much more knowledge than you do. And that can be quite difficult for that doctor to you know, kind of respond to that and to make the right choices. And, and, and therefore, you know, often there's a case of, you know, I don't know enough about it, sorry, I can't help you. Um, that's what we need to change. We want doctors to come and come up to the, the knowledge that patients have, um, who, uh, but but then underpinned by sort of that clinical training and the evidence of the various different um, aspects of cannabis. And that's that's what we need. That, and I, I see that as one of the biggest bottlenecks to um, patients being prescribed medical cannabis. Project 2021 itself uh, has a lot of resources and support for doctors who want to be prescribing. So if in fact if you are a doctor and you want and you want to you want to prescribe medical cannabis or are thinking about it, then coming to us is a, is a really great first step. Um, and as I say, we work closely with MCCS and PCCN and um, other support um, organisations as well. Um, but we, you know, we uh, a doctor could come to us and if they said, "I want to prescribe medical cannabis." We have everything, all the kind of the whole framework that they can to, to allow them to do that. Um, as long as they can kind of establish themselves as an independent prescriber, uh, we can give them all the information about. Um, uh, medical cannabis. Uh, we have a formulary that they can prescribe from through Project 2021. We have a, a database where they would collect all the uh, patient outcome data and record it. Um, and we have we have patients who are who are lining up. They're you know they're they're waiting to be prescribed through the projects. To be honest, the, the, the capacity is the doctors there. Um, if we had more doctors, um, there'd be much quicker throughput of patients being prescribed to. Um, so that's why there's that bottleneck, but um, we are doing all we can at Drug Science to help doctors with the resources that they need, uh, support that they need, um, the ability to be able to prescribe safely, knowing that also there's um, there is a group. So, so we have a scientific oversight board who David Nutt is on that, but is made up of um, eight or nine other um, very prominent scientists or, or rather uh, clinicians, I should say, uh, who who oversee the, the different conditions that we've identified. And they they are the experts in in those areas, and they can provide further support to doctors. You know, if they want to learn more, they you know they need somebody to kind of um, you know discuss with. Uh, as well. Um, so it's, it's all there, it's all there. We need to look at the evidence um, when it comes to medical cannabis. So there is there is plenty of evidence in the world uh, where other countries have been um, uh, prescribing medical cannabis for much longer than we have in much greater numbers and, that, and the, the efficacy data there is hugely valid. Um, but in the UK, we, we we don't like looking at other countries. We like to have our own. We like to do it ourselves, and I think that's to the detriment um, sometimes. And it is in this case. So there's plenty of evidence in other parts of the world to show that um, cannabis can be effective in a whole range of different. Um, uh, indications, um, but but then also there's evidence in the UK as well, and and there's, you know, there's there's a, a, like over a million people in the UK are using cannabis for medical re for therapeutic purposes, not recreational, um, for therapeutic purposes, having to access from the illegal market, but they are doing it. They are doing it because they know that they respond well to it, and that is that is um, very powerful um, information to look at you know why are we restricting cannabis to very narrow and a very narrow range of conditions at the moment where it can be prescribed through the nhs we just need to look at the evidence we need to develop evidence where it doesn't exist and we need to develop the guidelines around that to to widen the access um, from where we are now which is which is as i said very narrow so so my yeah my message to um the, the policymakers uh, of this world is to is is to use the evidence and to develop the right guidelines as a result.
My name is Sam Cannon and I am the founder of Beyond Green. On the 2nd and 3rd of December this year, the UN will vote on the World Health Organization's recommendation on the rescheduling of cannabis. This is a mammoth moment in time. Please like, comment and share these videos so that the truth can be told and that the planet and everybody on it can benefit from this truly, truly incredible plant once again. Thank you.